I'm Louise Bly and I've worked in project and programme management and consultancy for over 30 years. I've been involved in research on successful and unsuccessful projects across a number of industries. Project failure is my topic tonight. Do you want the publicity of failure and the associated shame on your organisation? Why do projects fail? During the presentation, you will see that there are key areas of failure involving no sponsor, poor definition of scope, missing business requirements, poor or missing plans, and a complete ignorance of risks and issues. I'm going to show you six projects which have failed. These are examples from around the world, but the first one's close to home, but known worldwide. In Great Britain, the BBC spent 135.9 million of the licence fee on moving away from old technology videotape to online storage and new editing tools. The new initiative was developed by an outside vendor, but they did not perform and it was brought in-house. This was not much better and the project floundered. There had been inaccurate reporting and it finally became clear from a whistleblower that they were major problems. The audit office was called in. They reported there was failure of senior executives to take control, confusion on what they were trying to achieve, failure to understand the complexity, and poor communication with the staff. The new director general said it was a waste of license payers' money and scrapped the project. <coughs> Canada, the Avon lady calls. Avon operates and distributes cosmetics and household products around the world via a network of agents who sell directly to friends and family. In 2012, they started a project to develop a new sales order system with a tablet-enabled front end. They trialled it out in Canada and it was a disaster. The software had errors, the sales staff struggled with the tablets. The key to selling Avon products is through sales parties where the customer samples products. The new system only had images of the products and it had ceased to be interactive. The customers didn't like the change and the parties weren't any fun. The failure caused the orders to drop and profits to plummet. One senior, said, a senior manager said a third of his total force had resigned. In 2013, the project was abandoned with a write-off of $125 million. There was a lack of buy-in from the sales staff and failure to understand the customers' needs. USA, the Denver Airport Baggage Handling System, billed as the most advanced in the world. The new Denver Airport Baggage Handling System developed problems during testing. The system developed a tendency to enjoy eating people's baggage. That was ignored and treated as a glitch. During the live demonstration to the press, the baggage system crushed bags, disgorged contents, and the final straw was to, when two heavy carts moving at high speed crashed into each other, destroying what was left of the baggage. More testing took place, which caused the new airport to sit idle for 16 months at a cost of 560 million US dollars. They scrapped the system in 2005 and returned to the manual tug and trolley method, which operated in one concourse for one airline for outward bound flights. The project had ignored advice on experienced airline staff underestimated architectural complexity, no controls on changes, and underestimated costs and timescales. In France, SNCF bought 2,000 new trains that were the wrong size. They were too big for the older stations and too tall for the tunnels. They could either modify the trains or the stations. If they modified the trains, it would cost 15 billion euros. They currently are modifying 1,300 station platforms at a cost of 50 $68 million. The problem was caused by the railway being run by one company, SNCF, and the track by another, RFF. Poor communication between the two companies, many assumptions made that were a failure to address and check the detail which resulted in the wrong measurements being provided. Norway and Kenya. Teach a Kenyan cattle herder to fish and you'll feed him for life. The Norwegian government decided to help relieve poverty by building a fish freezing plant on the shores of Lake Takana in northwest Kenya. The lake was teeming with fish, but the local population were cattle herders. A local co cooperative was needed to manage the seed capital, develop the fish factory, and transport fish to the customers. It also planned to develop local services such as safe water and primary and secondary schools. About 152 million was pumped into the project. 
20 years on, the project reminds us, aimed and good intentions are not enough. The project failed because it was poor consultation with the communities, no local sponsor, lack of managing and monitoring the project. A diplomatic row between Norway and Kenya with President Moy dismissing the Norwegian ambassador and not realising if the ambassador left, the money would go with him. USA, the state of California had 13 old systems to handle payroll and benefits payments for 243,000 employees. They merged the systems into a single solution. The first failed attempt cost $70 million. There was a second failed attempt affecting 1,300 staff. Staff were paid incorrect amounts, family members denied medical services, payments went to the wrong people, pensions miscalculated. After eight monthly cycles, the system continued to fail. The system was scrapped. There was no buy-in from the senior management, poor controls and communications, and no understanding of working practices. Is it possible to be successful? Yes, it is. My favorite, the stunning bridge in southern France. The project was complex with leading edge technology and multiple suppliers. There were wild weather variations, but it was built on time and within budget. A committed sponsor and excellent project management. The keys to project management success have been demonstrated by understanding the reasons for failure. We often learn more from failure than success. I have many more examples of both successful and unsuccessful projects. Just make sure your project does not end up as a failure in the national press. And thank you for listening.